Independent practice, the what, why, and how of incorporating purposeful, independent practice in a three-part mathematics program. The three big ideas we will explore in this screencast are, one, what does independent practice truly mean, and what does it look like in a three-part math lesson? Two, how can independent practice be used as assessment as and for learning to guide next steps and further instruction? And three, what is the teacher's role in independent practice? And what is the student's role? A Freire model is a graphic organizer that can be used as a front-loading activity to a unit or lesson. It is also a way to organize thoughts when defining vocabulary or asking essential questions. This organizer can also be used at the end of a lesson, unit, or as an independent practice activity. To get things started, we'd like you to take 5 to 10 minutes to work through a Freire model of your own. Please pause the playback function on your video viewer as you work through this activity. When finished, you can resume playing at the screencast. As you are doing your Freire model, reflect about how this looks in your classroom. Why is it important for your students to practice skills independently? What will you do with the information you acquire from your students during independent practice time? This activity was conducted with teachers from around our board in six separate sessions. The results and thoughts from these six sessions have been consolidated and are presented in the Freire model you see here. Please take some time to compare and contrast the results listed here with your own thoughts and ideas from the previous activity. You may wish to pause playback once more in order to take enough time to thoughtfully reflect on your answers as you compare them to those of your colleagues from around the board. We'd like to highlight a couple of recurring themes that were discussed in all six sessions. Number one, independent practice is a way for students to consolidate their understanding of a concept being learned and as a measure of what students understand on their own. Number two, independent practice is something that is differentiated to meet the individual needs of the learners in your room. Independent tasks should be thoughtfully chosen and need to fit within a student's zone of proximal development. In other words, students need to be able to complete the task independently, but the work needs to be rigorous enough to push their thinking. Number three, independent practice needs to be used as an assessment tool to guide next steps and further instruction. It should be non-evaluative, instead being used to assess what your students do and do not understand. Number four, teachers can use independent practice to set up guided, small group math instruction for students who need assistance in acquiring certain concepts and or skills. This is similar to how guided reading groups are used in balanced literacy programs. We hope that you have found this screencast beneficial in guiding your professional practice. It is important to keep in mind that independent practice is a crucial component to a successful mathematics program. Thus, students should be practicing and refining skills learned on a regular basis. We would like to leave you with a thoughtful analogy. Think of students as athletes, musicians, artists, etc. that are preparing for the big game or a final performance. Consider all of the time and energy that is put into practicing and refining skills learned prior to the big day. These practice days are never evaluative, but instead focus on continual growth and improvement that leads to personal success, so that when the final performance arrives, excellence, not perfection, is possible. Thank you for taking the time to watch this screencast. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact any of the curriculum staff.